I've always loved Peter, don't you? We love him because he is us. He's the disciple who questions Jesus when Jesus says he's to be crucified. We all have those times. We want to ask Jesus why. He's the one who wants to stay on the mountaintop of the transfiguration. We too prefer spiritual mountaintops to the reality of life in the valley. He's the one who swears he won't deny Jesus and then does three times. We too make promises to Jesus that we don't always keep. In today's gospel reading, Peter is the one who takes the risk, stepping out of the boat, walking on water until he sinks. We too know what it's like to get excited about doing something for Jesus only to have fear and doubt mess things up or to lose sight of Jesus when he's right in front of us. I love all the stories about Peter because he's so me, so human, so flawed, and yet he's still the rock on which Jesus builds the church. He gives me hope in the midst of my own missteps, questions, failures, and fears. That said, though, today's reading is best understood not as Peter's good advice on risk-taking mission and ministry, nor as the object lesson of Peter's inspirational TED Talk, just keep the faith and you too can walk on water. I'm not saying we can't learn a few things from Peter in this story. Of course we can. There are times to take risks and to step out on faith. But the other 11 disciples were faithful too. Think for a moment what might have happened to that boat if all 12 disciples walked out of the boat as the storm was raging. But 11 stayed, bailing out the water, tending to the boat, rowing into the waves. Sometimes, like Pastor Tyler said a couple of weeks ago, it's in the small moments that we live out our faith, wearing the mask, taking care of our neighbor, listening to medical experts. Staying in the boat doesn't mean less faith. It's faith that's expressed differently. So while Peter may give good advice, what we need even more in the storms of life is good news. A savior who will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Out on the water, Jesus is in a life coach telling Peter, have more faith, have more courage, keep your eyes on me. Instead, as Peter's seeking, sinking, Jesus reaches out his hand and pulls Peter up. The first words that Jesus says in today's reading is this, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Those words, do not be afraid, appear more than 100 times in scripture. The good news of the gospel begins and ends with the words, do not be afraid. They are the words the angel speaks to Mary, Joseph, and the terrified shepherds, and they're the words the angel speaks at the empty tomb, do not be afraid. Scripture never says there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of is very different from do not be afraid. Because the Bible never denies that there are frightening things in this world. There are. The disciples were afraid of drowning in the storm. They were afraid they were all alone out on the water in a dark night. We get their fear. Unfortunately, this is shaping up to be an awfully active hurricane season, even as the COVID-19 storm rages on. We're afraid of the virus, afraid of what it might do to those we love. We're lonely, isolated, scared for the future of our economy, and scared too over what this division over masks might be doing to our communities. These fears are valid. The Bible never denies fear is real. But nearly every time we read in the Bible, do not be afraid, we also find assurance and hope in the added phrase, for I am with you. As the water's raging, the wind's battering, the storm overwhelming, it is I, Jesus says. Do not be afraid. The Greek in Matthew, it is I, echoes the voice that speaks from the burning bush, I am. I am is with you. 
the one who swept across the dark waters and brought forth light and life, the one who saved those on the ark through water, the one who delivered the Hebrews from Egypt through the sea and across the Jordan into the promised land. Take heart. It is I. I am. Do not be afraid. Now, we don't know the reaction of the other disciples, but Peter replies to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, we often hear this response of Peter as one of excitement over the new possibility that has opened before him. Lord, if it's you, let's go. Let's walk on this water. Let's take this ministry thing to a whole new level. And while this challenge to take a risk can be good, this reading too often teaches that if we're afraid to take risks or if we take them and fail, it's on us because we lack faith or our faith isn't enough in the face of fear. It makes Jesus' response to Peter one of reprimand, you of little faith. This reading then seems to put the responsibility on us to have more faith. And that is not good news. But what if instead Peter's question is seen as a challenge to Jesus himself, to his very identity? Lord, if it really is you, prove it by commanding me to walk on water. I suspect we've all had those times when life is stormy, when life is tough, fearful, when we are sore afraid, times that make us question and doubt. Is Jesus really with us? Can we really trust that we're not alone? A little walking on water miracle would go a long way to alleviate, alleviating our fears, wouldn't it? Lord, if it really is you. If Peter's question is a challenge to Jesus's identity and presence, then perhaps Jesus' response to Peter is less reprimand and more lament. Why so little faith in me, Peter? Why did you doubt that it was me when I called out to you after we had just fed 5,000 people with so little food? Coming to you, I told you exactly who I was, comforting you, assuring you over the raging wind and water, yet you doubt it. And with little faith, you ask, Lord, is it really you? Why so little faith when it was me right there with you in the storm? Because the good news is Jesus was there with the disciples on the boat, hearing their cries, coming to them, reaching out to Peter, a saving hand, comforting all of them, climbing into the boat with them. This short but powerful story is way more than good advice about faith and courage and risk-taking. Risk it is the very good news of Jesus Christ. In every storm of life, may we trust that good news. The good news that the Lord of the wind and seas, the Lord of life, the one who is Emmanuel, Savior and Lord, is right there with us, reaching out to us, assuring us. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.